Welcome to another episode of Puff Daddy Reef, and today we're gonna talk about copepods. So I've got a lot to talk about with copepods today. Also stay tuned to the end of the video. I have a shopping cart tip for Live Aquaria to save you some money. But I wanted to show you my tuxedo urchin. I have decided to name him Gilly because he tries desperately to hide himself. However, he's not very good. That snail shell on him is not fooling anyone. Now let's get to the video. So copepods are basically these small critters, they're crustaceans that live in the reef. And what they do is they're kind of detritivores. They also eat algae, but they're a really good source of nutrients for your fish to pick them off during the day. And they're also a key part in the food chain for smaller fish and fish larvae. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seed my tank with them. The main reason I'm gonna do this, well, I need a little bit more of that natural flora and fauna in my reef tank. A lot of times when you seed a tank with live rock, you'll get copepods in with it. I didn't have a lot of live rock in this tank, so I'm not sure, so I did purchase some uh, copepods from Live Aquaria. So I've got these guys, Parvo Calanus copepods. So I tried to get a video for you guys of these things moving around with my macro lens. You can see some of them jumping around, but it was really difficult to get a good view. So this is an image of the Parvo Calanus copepod provided by Algogen. This copepod is one of the smallest ones that they offer. It's point eight to 0.9 millimeters in size, so exceptionally tiny, great for larval fish, but your larger fish probably won't make much of a snack out of it. However, it is a good food for filter feeders, feather dusters, Christmas tree worms, and clams, and it's a good basis for the lower end of the food chain. They'll consume phytoplankton and create biomass at a higher level. I also have these um, other ones, pseudo whatever. Let me try that again. Pseudodioptimus. Now this is a medium-sized copepod, 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters in size, and these guys do like to hang out in the water column, so this will be a good food for your feather dusters, clams, sponges, and other filter feeders as well. It might also be possible for some of these smaller uh, copepod-eating fish to take advantage of them, like dragonets. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to acclimate them to my tank, then I'm going to put them in my tank. I've removed all my filter socks. I'm going to turn off my skimmer. Anything but the return, so hopefully I have the best chances of these guys establishing themselves in my aquarium. One of my hypotheses is, is that my tank, which still is a little bit cloudy but is improving, if that's due to bacteria, these may or may not help nearly as much, but if it's due to a single cellular algae, uh, these will definitely take a bite out of it. I also picked up a third thing and some rotifers and you might have seen that well I've already dumped a little bit of these in um, but rotifers are typically used when you're culturing clownfish I used to grow a bunch when I was trying to hatch clownfish I was not the most successful because you've got to be on top of things I had one larva that lasted oh maybe a couple weeks the rotifers themselves feed on this single cellular algae they're a good food source for different things so I'm going to introduce them to the tank Hopefully they can start a small colony, and if there is any sort of that single cellular algae clouding my water, these guys will also help out. I'm going to get started, and let's go. So I've let the volume in there about triple. They should be nice and acclimated. These guys are just so tiny, it's hard to see them. I also fed all the fish, I turned off the skimmers and all the pumps, uh, took out the filter socks, so we should be good to go. I'm going to add them to the tank. Now normally I don't add water from other sources into the tank, but you kind of have no option with this. The good thing is that these are, these things are grown um, without any fish in there. So they're free of fish and coral diseases. Or at least that's what they say. So I'm just gonna try to add most of them down here. So hopefully some of those guys sink to the bottom. 
with all those balls kicked up a little bit of detritus so that might help disguise them and maybe they'll settle down there and start a little colony and one more thing uh, when I bought these live I bought them from live aquaria and they typically have uh, one of them on sale at a time uh, the sales switch over I think on Thursdays but what I found if I add one to my cart and then the next sale goes on and then I add the other to my cart they actually both stay on sale in my cart and I can check them both out and get the discount on both also real quick I wanted to do a shout out to love the reef it's a local fish store in town I recently uh, took a trip there and all right, we're here at Love the Reef. Let's check it out. And I picked up some snails and a cool invertebrate that I will reveal in my next video. This is going in my Nouveau Fusion 20 gallon tank. I'm turning it into maybe an invertebrate themed tank. And so I'll show you that. Be sure to subscribe so you are notified when that video goes live in about a week. So thank you for watching and I'll leave you with a view of the 300 gallon display tank at Love the Reef.